Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. This is Boss Vision where I share with you all everything you need to know about making candles. Why is everyone so in love with me? Could it be my lips or my energy? I could count on my feeling one, two, three. Everybody is so in love with me. In today's video, I'm beyond excited to be sharing with you all exactly how to make the perfect candle. And if you stay until the end, I will be sharing my specific tips to make sure you get the strongest hot throw. If you haven't already, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Comment down below, say hey, I always reply to every comment. Definitely check out shopbossvision.com if you have any questions about this video or any other candle making questions, since everything is on shopbossvision.com. And definitely subscribe if you haven't already, we're so close to 100K, you're like 30% of the way y'all, let's get to 100K, all right, let's just jump right in. First things first, I wanted to walk you through all the materials you'll need to create the perfect candle. If you're a complete beginner, this is your first candle making video, I want to be the voice of reason and to lead you on the right path and get you off that hot messiness that could happen. <laughs> I would definitely recommend starting with the double burner method. You don't need a big melter right now if you're making small batches of candles. Double burner method consists of a melting pot and a burner, both from Walmart. Like $6 for the pot, like $10 for the melter. Some water, I'm using distilled water right now. You do not want to put candle stuff on your stove. It's wax and fragrance. This is not edible items. Stay away from putting non-edible items on your stove. Look how waxy it is. You know, everything is waxed out. That's how your stove would look, okay? And definitely don't ever reuse this for any cooking because you don't want to eat wax, get sick. Then you need a scale. I get my scale off Amazon. This is the Taylor scale. It's the only one I trust. I've gone through so many scales. It has been so annoying as it relates to making candles. With some scales, they just stop working. Some of them, they do this little metal bouncing thing so I don't get an accurate depiction of what I need. Just get the Taylor scale. I'll link it down below. I have a pouring picture. I also get this off Amazon. If there's anything you can get off Amazon, on. I'm gonna let you know. The shipping. And once you get into the candle business world, you'll realize that everything from candle vendors is gonna cost shipping because they are shipping it from their warehouse. And then alcohol. This is cute, right? It's really rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle. I recommend putting it in a spray bottle because you're gonna spray your jar down and sanitize your jar. Like oftentimes you'd be like, oh wow, I don't need to sanitize I got a brand new from the vendor. But you're going to need to sanitize your jar so that it'll be easy to adhere your wicks to it. Think about when you go to the nail salon and get your nails done, they do that dehydrator and primer. They make you wash your hands. You want it to be dry so that it'll adhere properly. And the last thing you want is your wicks to move. So I put some alcohol in the spray bottle. You're also going to need some wicks. So for this jar, we're using LX14 wicks. Get LX14 wicks from High and Honey with my code of money off. I know it's itching, that means somebody's talking about me, thinking about me, whatever. The LX14 wicks are really good. These are perfect for the jars we're using today, which are the iridescent aura jars from Makesy. Definitely use my code for Makesy, you'll get money off too. This is, I don't even know why I have it in the bag still, but it comes in a bag. That's how you know it's about to be that plush, that gas. Look at this jar. That's crazy, right? It is iridescent, like almost a rainbow, but matte white on the inside. And that's what I love. And I'm looking right in it, and it has debris. You see the debris? You probably can't even see the this debris. So that's another reason why we use alcohol and we sanitize it. And then wick stickers. I would never recommend to use anything but wick stickers. Don't you get your don't you get your hot glue gun? That is a mess. That's a whole mess of kerfuffling. You want to get your stuff together. You want to be organized, clean, turn and burn, cook and book. Get your candles made. Wick stickers, okay? And then also you're gonna need a metal spatula. You never heard this on anybody's channel. I made this up, okay, period. So I was tired of stirring in fragrance with like a thermometer, you know, a little metal or something, and it wasn't giving you a strong hot throw. This helps aid in your hot throw. You need a folding method to aid in your hot throw. Think about when people make cake. When you make a cake, do you just take a, a, a little piece of like a toothpick and stir in the ingredients? No, you get you a spatula and you really fold it in there. The reason why I got a metal spatula is because it's heat resistant and we're playing with fire here. Well, we're not really playing with fire, but it's hot. It's hot. So you want to make sure you have something that can withstand the time and stand the rain. Sunny days, everybody loves them. Tell me, baby, can you stand the rain? Do do do. <laughs> you know, withstand the rain. And then a chip clip, okay, a lot of people will use wick centering tools, which is cute and expensive. I recommend chip clips. You can get them in like a large hundred count for like $7. 
chip clips work actually better because it's customizable. It doesn't matter what jar you have. So I'm gonna put the chip clip in there, you're good to go. Okay, and then your wax. This is the main event. This is the reason why you're watching this video, how to make a perfect candle. Obviously the number one thing to make a perfect candle is a perfect wax. You're gonna need this amazing wax from Hive and Honey, okay? There's a sticker, I'll take another sticker. So this is their 51104. Coco Soy Hybrid Wax. This is the premium creme de la creme, the best wax you can get. Tell me, comment down below if you ever heard of Titan. You never heard of Titan unless you heard of that submarine. Don't worry about that submarine. This is better than that. This is more high quality than that submarine, okay? This is a hybrid cocoa soy. So oftentimes people are like, I want toxin-free, phthalate-free, vegan wax, good for the environment, but I want to save on costs and get you a hybrid. You don't just have to go that super expensive coconut apricot cream. It's more expensive than going the soy wax route, right? And cocoa apricot is better, smooth talk all the time. Soy wax, you're gonna get a good hot the uh, it's not that great, but um it's cheaper, you know? And that's why the soy waxes they be like four four four, they be like all these different numbers and stuff because it's challenging. The numbers are challenging as the recipes are. But to do a hybrid of the good expensive stuff and the cheap Okay stuff, oh my God, it's a match made in heaven. So it's just gonna show you, I'm gonna show you today just how easy it is to use this Hive and Honey Wax. I'll link this down below too. As I said before, if you use my code, you'll get some money off. But let's just dive right in. First thing I like to do uh, when I make candles is to start the water boiling. Yeah, so then just from there, we're gonna just turn on the eye to the highest degree. You want it to be a lower amount of water because you're gonna put this large pitcher in the water. And the last thing you wanna do when you put the pitcher in there is for this to flow off and fall off and just mess up your life, right? So just while that is going, we're going to move fast, okay? It's already starting to smoke up. Um, but the first things first, I like to sanitize my jar, so I'm just going to grab a napkin. I use any napkins from Deliver Food, keep those, okay? Don't use them. Use your own paper towels. Use these for like, you know, camera making and stuff. So I'm just going to sanitize this jar, just scrub through it. And then you give that a minute to dry out because, of course, you put alcohol in there, so we could blow it, I don't know, whatever. But then we're going to do the double wick method. So I am a firm believer in double wicking any jars that are larger than 3.5 inches in diameter. If it's any smaller, you should do one wick, but if it's larger, you want to get that good, even burn early on. And we're setting a flame in here. The fire alarm might go off, but we're fine. Uh, Hope I didn't speak that in the exact existence, but yeah, the wick stickers are super important to keep it as a clean burn, and you'll see side by side on the screen exactly how easy it is to adhere wicks to the jar. So I am just taking my LX14 wicks and applying them to my stickers firm and aggressive. You want them stuck together, loving on each other like it's Valentine's. Y'all got Valentine's? Comment down below if you got a Valentine. So you just pull this out, and then I don't um, have like a centering tool or anything for that. Well, I have a centering tool, but I don't use it. I prefer to just freehand it, it's better. Typically, you just try to do um, by the lines of demarcation in the jar, which is so great that basically gives you this like this little diameter thing basically at the bottom of the jar that lets you know where the flat parts are and you just try to do it side by side and you'll see this. I'll put side by side of the video. You you see what I'm talking about right here. <laughs> but yeah, that is done. Boom, baby. So now we're going to be measuring out our wax. So since it is a 12 ounce jar, I just do 11 ounces of wax and one ounce of fragrance. So, for this recipe, I'm just going to clear out my measuring thing. And I, the units are fluid ounces, just because I like to make sure that everything is perfect there. And then just pull out your wax. As you can see from Hive and Honey, it's saran wrapped carefully for easy shipping. I also recommend. 
recommend that you carefully chop the wax up. You don't want to do like big chunks in here because it takes longer for you to actually melt it down. So I do like small squares. Um, and it's important to put your hair up. I didn't. So now I'm just watching to make sure no hair gets anywhere. But I cut up very small squares. Little cubes. Okay, and another reason why you do the cubes is because when you're measuring out the wax on your scale, you want to get the exact amount. So we're focusing on 11 ounces here, okay? So let's just turn it back on. And boom. One round. About 2.5. Three. Five, 0.3, 8.3, 10.7. So now we have to do a very small sliver, little sliver, little cube. It just reminds me of cheese, like mozzarella. 11, perfect. So exciting, we got it perfectly. Okay, now, because you wanna have a clean workspace, don't just leave your wax out all raw. You know what I mean? We're gonna carefully put our wax back together. If you need a wax container, I'll link that down below too. Because you can leave it in this Ziploc bag. But sometimes during the summer, you're gonna need a container so you don't melt your wax and so that bugs don't come to it. It's almost like when we first very important to keep your area well ventilated You want your temperature to be at least 70 degrees in your home And then you also want to make sure that your double burner the eye is completely free of debris Because if it has anything on it, it will heat it up and then it'll cause an increase in smoke Like what we're seeing right here and then you'll have to keep all your doors completely open or else the fire alarm will go off <laughs> But yeah, we're going to do uh, one ounce of fragrance and I have another tool to show you. Okay, so I use this for my fragrance oil. This is a plastic uh, measuring pitcher. I have to use this because it's easier to clean up and it's reusable and it helps me to pour out all the fragrance in a, a custom way, you know, instead of just dumping it. It's also wide enough for me to pour as much fragrance as I want. I'm using Ice Vanilla Woodlands from Hive and Honey. It's an amazing... Wow, that wax is almost done. This is an amazing fragrance to add to any recipe for the winter or the fall. It's perfect. Um, I'm just going to jump right in. We just need one ounce. And I just want to do Boom, baby, one ounce. The wax is completely melted, so I'm just going to make sure it's at the proper temperature. Um, I'll insert the instructions for 51104 on the screen right here. So it's a best practice to make sure that it's at roughly 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you stir in your fragrance immediately for 30 seconds. So make sure we're at 200. We're in there, okay? So then you just take it off the heat, period, immediately add your fragrance. And you stir for 30 seconds. But it's important to move slowly though. Think about when you cook. If you rush it, it's just not going to give you the, the vibe. I mean, yes, you could do, it's better than cooking. Like, the slower you stir, the better. I don't know the analogy, but just slowly stir it in and think about how good that candle's gonna smell. Think about how good, how much money you're gonna make. Think about how many people you're gonna impact. You know, really get dramatic about it, okay? I usually say do this for two minutes, but that's typically with coconut apricot cream. If you're using just cocoa soy, it's important to do it a rush because you don't want to just have a super low temperature for your candle when you're pouring. So it's important to pour it when it's roughly around 190. And I'll insert the link to my thermometer as well because that's also a common question. And ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to pour. So, pouring 
technique is important. So you should pour it at a 45 degree angle and slowly, slower the better. You splash it in there, you're gonna get that splash back and it's not very effective. So you just wanna take your time. Bad, oh, I don't care, it's getting too late. I want you and I can't wait. Don't wanna spend a minute without you. I know you feel the same. So come on, give me love. And it's a perfect pour. Yes, guys. So 11 ounces of wax, 1 ounce of fragrance. Get, got me the perfect pour. Um, and comment if you're like an intermediate counter maker and you get that anxiety while you're pouring. Like, oh, I over poured or oh, I over estimate or underestimate. But then when you finally finish, it's like, oh, perfect pour. It's the most gratifying experience. Yes, guys. So chip clip time. I don't put this on before because I don't want this to interfere with how I pour. Typically, if your wicks are centered prior to, they can interfere with the quality of your pour. So now we're just going to add on our wicks carefully. Make sure they're standing straight up. That way, when, some, when your customer gets their candle and they decide to burn it, it's going to be straight up. But yeah, guys, that was my entire method there. I will check in with you guys within 24 hours after this candle has completely cured and we're able to cut, trim the wicks and do a burn test. Commercial, TV, you hear me, TV. This is TV, Fox Vision TV. Okay guys, so it's been 24 hours, so we're going to trim the wicks to 1 fourth inch or lower <laughs> and light it with my torch. I'm gonna pack an order now and I'll check in with you guys in like an hour. For the purpose of this video, I did speed up this segment, but I did want to say that the LX14 wigs did what they had to do within this 51104 Coco Soy Titan Hybrid Wax. I definitely recommend this wax. If you don't get anything from this video, make sure you grab the Coco Soy Wax. It's so easy to use. You're going to get a smooth top every time. As you can see here, such a clean burn with these LX wigs. I wanted to show you in the dark so you can gain a better understanding of what that would look like. And I'm super excited, guys, for you all to gain access to my code. Yes, yeah, so if you use the code Boss Vision, you will get some money off of the wax. And y'all know wax is expensive, so it's super important to get as many incentives as possible to make sure you're making a return on your investment. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Comment down below if you're going to use my recipe here or if this helped you as a framework for your own recipes. And if you see a lot of things going on in the background, it's because I was packing an order while I was doing this. But yeah, I'm so glad you guys stayed this far to the end of the video. If you got this far, you did not subscribe. What is wrong with you? Please subscribe. We are on our road to 100K. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, your week. Your next hour, just live in your purpose and love life. Okay, bye.